Tuck again, your over one star the protagonist is here. And yes, as you can tell by the title of the video, this is not clickbait. And this may be a hot take, but Fortnite Mirrors 2024 has 100% saved season four. I know that might sound crazy, but that's exactly how I see it. And I have my reasons as to why I've come to that conclusion. But before we get to that, I gotta get my thoughts on this season out of the way first. And the things I'm gonna say here, you might relate to some of them. I'm gonna cut to the chase here. Season three is still hands down the best season of chapter five. The idea of using cars as a way of combat was amazing. I will admit the cars were very overpowered at the beginning of the season, but they were nerfed and were very easy to take down. To say that there were no counters to the cars and that you needed a car to win is completely false. We had the nitro fist, the nitro splashes, the heavy impact sniper rifle, magneto power, and the minigun. These were powerful enough to take down the cars and are very fun to use for combat while still using the old and new guns like the combat shotgun, the combat assault rifle, the gatekeeper shotgun, and the boom vault. And secondly, you can still win matches even without a car. I don't understand how anyone could make those claims, but when it comes to season four, I barely play this season, despite my current level being at over 300. The battle pass is really good, and the new POIs and medallions are okay, but the loot pool is a mixed bag. The new Sovereign Shotgun is fine, there are two ways to use it. With aiming, it shoots slower. Without aiming, it shoots a lot faster. Sometimes it works, but I remember seeing someone using it against another player, and they were just hitting blanks. Thankfully that never happened to me, but the shotgun can be unbalanced sometimes. The Monarch pistol, however, that's a high chill weapon in my opinion. It does a lot of good damage with or without aiming, and the Striker Burst AR is also cool to use. But then we get to the Marvel weapons, and I think they're both a hit and a miss. Captain America's shield is so damn annoying. You could be dealing with a player that abuses the hell out of it. Now it's cool that you can punish the player for abusing it, but you get no badge for spamming it constantly. Doom's gauntlets are pretty cool to use, and I like using Shuri's claws. They're good for mobility and combat, and when they're 100% charged, you can go buck wild against enemies. I love Iron Man's combat and flight kits, especially the combat kit because it can auto aim when using the blasters. And the uni beam is so cool to use, and when you combine it together with War Machine's turn, it's a disgusting combo. War Machine's arsenal is good, but unless you're with your team, you're gonna get shredded in mere seconds. Trust me, that happened to me. However, despite all of that, Cap's shield is nothing compared to the most infamous item to use, and that's War Machine's jetpack. Now, it's cool for mobility, but here's the biggest problem. The spawn rate is completely nerfed. There's a low chance of you getting a jetpack, so when you see someone else with one, you're out of luck. You're completely a sitting duck, and no matter how much you try to run, they will track you down like bloodthirsty hounds. Like imagine finishing a fight with barely any health and no heals, only to see someone homing in with a jetpack. You're completely fucked. Say what you want about the nitro fist and the cars, but unlike those, you can't win without a jetpack. Otherwise, you're completely clapped. Kissy goodbye, your victory, and your sanity. Oh, and how can I forget the Isle of Doom? Good on paper, but terrible execution. The way it works is that when you see a prompt in with Doom's face, the Isle of Doom will appear. This will cause players to go batshit insane for the chance of becoming Doom. It's like that LTM where you become Thanos, only this time it's in Battle Royale, which was a horrible idea. They should have made this into an LTM instead of putting it in the BR. Thanks a lot, Fortnite. Now I really hate Doom with a cure of passion. Look, as much as I enjoy this season, this one has to be my second least favorite in Chapter 5. Oh yes, it's worse than Season 2. I know I said that the Avatar and Star Wars events overshadowed Season 2's theme, but even then, I still had a lot of fun with that season, and the loot pool barely had any game-breaking items. This season, however, while it's still good, I still wouldn't put it above the previous two seasons. Absolute Doom was an absolute bust. I can only hope that Fortnite OG 2 becomes a much better season than this. I don't ever want to see another Marvel season ever again for a long time. But what I do want to see is you hitting the like button if you're enjoying the video so far. Also, while you're at it, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss out on any new videos I upload. Now, despite my criticisms of season 4, 
there was a bigger light at the end of the tunnel. And that's Fortnite Mirrors 2024. I've already given my praises on Fortnite Mirrors 2023, but this year's Fortnite Mirrors cranked it up a notch. Firstly, the collabs. Unlike last year, this year's collabs have doubled up to a total of over six collabs. We got Billy the Puppet from Saw. We got the second wave of the Nightmare Before Christmas. We got Edward Scissorhands. More Marvel skins like Mephisto, Agony, She-Venom, and Spider-Woman. We got Texas Chainsaw. The Disney villains are coming soon as well. And we're even getting a remixed Marshmallow skin at the end of Fort Nightmares called Raven Mellow. That's up to 13 collab skins. And we even got some new original skins and remixes as well. Shadow Monks, Dark Ruby, Dark Guff, well, Phantom Guff, a new Penny skin, which will be the next Save a World pack. Imagine that being my first one ever. Ultima Carver, and we even got a new Lexus skin, which is so fucking cute. And it doesn't stop there, we're also getting returning original skins and collabs. I cannot wait to finally get the Jack Skellington bundle. I missed out on it last year, but I ain't missing out on it this time. Now that was just the item shop. What about the rest of the content? Well, I'm happy to see Horde Rush return. That was a damn good LTM for Halloween. Even more so now that you can use the Marvel Mythics in the mode. And I will say this now, Captain America's shield is hella useful against the cube monsters. And as for BR, oh, they locked the fuck in this time. So three of the POIs were changed. One of them is now called, I kid you not, Freaky Fields. Freaky ass nigga here, 69 God. For the loot pools, they brought back the Witch Boom, which was an awesome mobility item. I really love using it a lot. They also brought back the Pumpkin Launcher and the Wood Stake Shotgun. Very cool and fun items to use, but now we got two brand new items in the loot pool. The Chainsaw, which is used for mobility in combat, and it's disgustingly awesome to use. And we got the Boom Billy, a miniature billy that will lock onto anyone nearby and explode, damaging them in the process. But the best thing that happened for this update is that the damn jetpack is now vaulted for the rest of the season. Now I can finally play this season without worrying about that annoying jetpack. This update also has over 10 free rewards that we can earn, which is hella awesome. And there's so much more in this Halloween update that I cannot explain, but I think you get the point. This event is hella awesome. Even better than last season's Fortnite Nightmares, which was still good in my eyes. But after an awful winter fest and the most dog water summer event, Epic finally decided to put more effort into a seasonal event and it definitely paid off. Hopefully we can get a good winter fest this year. Now, why do I think Fortnite Mares 2024 saved season four? I'm not gonna lie when I say that barely anything fun happened throughout this season. I mean, we got an okay mini live event with a cinematic. That's cool, I guess. And Shuri's Claws and Iron Man's Mythics were fun to use. But this season barely had any loophole changes, and we were supposed to use the other Marvel Mythics, but we got nothing out of it. The Day of Doom LTM was fine, and the new skins were pretty cool, especially Black Cat, but even that wasn't enough to get me enthusiastic into this season. I didn't really have that much thrill to play for over two hours. However, Fortnite Mirrors 2024 definitely shook up the scene with new collabs, POI changes, and a loophole that I can get down with. Combined with the jetpack being vaulted in BR, I can finally have fun again. Same goes for everyone else who hated the jetpacks. This was clearly a saving grace for me and many others. I'm sorry, but if you say this Halloween event is not good, it just proves that you can never be pleased. I didn't even mention that we could be getting a big end live event for Chapter 5 that'll take us into Fortnite OG 2. Like, how can anyone not like this amount of content we're constantly getting in less than a month? This could go down as the best Fortnite mirrors of all time. Maybe even second best to a lot of people. But I want to know how you are enjoying Fortnite mirrors 2024 so far. What are your thoughts on this event and what do you think of season four? Do you think it's good or do you think it's bad? Now, if you think season four is better than season three, that's completely fine. I can totally respect that. I would like to know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. And if you've already given up on this season, Maybe Fortnite Mirrors 2024 will do the opposite. Epic took people's feedback and locked in for this event. They actually put in a lot of effort and it clearly showed. What was a stressful start and climax 
ended up having a good ending in the end. And that's why I believe Fortnite Mario's 2024 saved season four. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, then be sure to share it with your friends and also comment down below what you guys think of season four as well as Fortnite Mario's 2024, as I said before. But yeah, uh, more videos coming out in the way. But until then, this is Startable Tag and signing out. As always, go Kigenyo and have a startastic day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.